hello guys you're welcome to my channel like i told you we are going to have a class on gc practical and that is what we're about having now but before we go let me quickly let you understand what we call alternative to practical when you say alternative to practical alternative to practical is just like i comes to meet you now and i i, I told you that if i slap you what will be your reaction you know, I'm yet to slap you. It's not as if I slap you, but I want to know what your reaction would be if I should slap you. The same thing goes to alternative to what? Practical. They want to know what you are going to do if you are to carry out that experiment in the lab. So they will provide you everything necessary to get your what? To get your result. Are you getting it now? Just like you perform the experiment in the lab. Now, how can you really do well in this? You have to be able to read carefully you have to read carefully because the whole of the answer is already in the question. So ability to read and understand is what you just need. And when you are attempting the question, you need to be calm. Don't rush. Take your time. Study the given question, especially the diagram. Read one after the other. Interpret what you are asked to do. How we assist by making videos on all the whole area of alternative to practical in physics. In physics, our question usually been three questions, and uh, we are advised to answer what? Two of our choice. That's awesome. But we have four major areas in physics where we usually have what? Experiment done, either in Wahe, Neko, or GC. And those four major areas include what? Mechanics, heat, light, and uh, electricity but we have three most common ones and that is the mechanics the lights and the electricity now you all know that the question on electricity usually being in question three and uh, if light will come at all is going to be in question two and for mechanics it's always question one so at times you can have one heat one light one electricity at times you can have one mechanism, one light, one electricity. Or you have one mechanism, one heat, one electricity. If you look at the, uh, the variation I gave to you now, you see that electricity is constant. So this video, I'll cover three questions, three different questions on mechanics for this video. And I'm going to plot a graph for one of them. It's not like I cannot plot graph for all, but I've made what? Uh, an extensive lecture on how to plot graph which you can find the link in the description box below before we start with the question number one on mechanics if you are yet to subscribe to this channel kindly do what kindly subscribe now your subscription and you sharing this channel is what will motivate me remember this channel is dedicated in order for you guys to master physics and mathematics very well feel free to chat me up you find my number in the description box below so whatever problem you are still having you can let me know and if you are in need of more questions on physics like uh, alternative for practical question that you can use to practice to know if you are really what set for this exam you can also private chat me then we talk is that taking you now thank you so now let's start with question number one so here is question number one and uh it's from the 1993 gc question 1993 number one how will i answer this question as a student so first, I'll first of all look at the diagram very well. If you look at the diagram very well, you see that I have two retort stand, S1 and S2, okay? And I have what? This pendulum bulb. Immediately I see this pendulum bulb, the first thing that comes to my mind is that I think this experiment is talking about a simple harmonic motion. Remember, a simple harmonic motion can come in different ways. As a student, that's the first thing that will come to your mind simple harmonic motion okay so let's go on the question now says the diagram above shows the ends of a light inextensible thread a c b fixed at points a and b simple pendulum of length l is suspended at the midpoint of the thread that is midpoint c of the thread so that AC equals CB equal L equals 0 0.5 meter. Angle DCB equal theta. 
is measured. That's to tell you that we are going to take the measurement of the length and we are going to take the measurement of the angle theta. Are we together? So the bulb is then set into auxiliation and the time t for 20 auxiliation measured and recorded. Take note, making the second thing that we are going to be measuring in this experiment, which is what? The time for 20 auxiliation. Take note of that. The procedure is repeated five more times by varying what? Theta. So that's to tell you that we are going to continue varying the value for theta. Otherwise, it means L is constant throughout the experiment. That is what I understand now. But let's go on and let's see what happened. So we are going to be varying the value for theta. So the next one now says the values of the angle theta are drawn as shown in figure 1A. That's to tell you that where you are going to get the value of your what? Of your theta. That is where you are picking the value of theta is here, figure 1A. This is figure 1A. This is where you get the value for theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5, and theta 6. Are we together? So let's go on with the question. So, and the corresponding time in figure 1B. So this is figure 1B. And you can see that the clock is already drawn. This is where we are picking the value for time. Are we together? Okay, if that should be the case, let's proceed. Determine the value of theta and t. Also, that is, we are measuring theta, we are measuring t. Also, determine what? T, which is the period of auxiliation in each case. Making three things we are looking for now. The theta, the small t, and the capital T, which stands for the period. Evaluate t square and cos theta. So we are going to look for t square after we've gotten the value for t, and we are going to look for what? Cos theta. Then tabulate your readings. This is the first part. Let's tackle that first part first. So tackling the first part, you see what I want to do? I will have uh, my rough page like this. So if I have my rough page like this, I already know what I want to measure from the question. I'll be measuring theta. I'll be measuring the time. I'll be measuring capital T. I'll be measuring T square. And I'll be measuring cos theta. So before I tabulate my reading, what I will need to do first is that I will have to determine the value for theta 1. Are you seeing it? This is happening in the rough page. Theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5, and theta 6. So likewise, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. Are we there? So, you see, I'm taking, I'll be taking all this in a rough page now. So, if you look at this now, then I will have, uh, what is it called? So, and also, I'll be looking at uh, the value for T. How will I get this capital T? Remember, the period of auxiliation is equal to T all over the number of auxiliation. This is the formula for that. Are you getting now? Period is equal to time taken to complete a certain number of what? Auxiliation. Are we together? From the normal definition of period, a period is the time taken to complete one auxiliation. So if I have so so time, are you getting it now? For 20 auxiliation, what will be the period? So this is the formula to use. Don't let us go in more uh, in that too much. So this is what I'm going to do now. Now see, let us now pick our values. So, in this question now, you will see that the only thing we need now is our I and uh, a protector. So, I'm trying to get my protector. Okay, this is my standard ruler, my ruler. Okay. So, my protector. Okay. Here now. So, if you look at this now, so let's start by looking for the value for theta 1. We are already told that we are going to get the value for theta 1 here. So, I'll place my protector on it. So the straight line, I have to, I have to look at something clearly. The, the, the straight line I have here, the straight line I have here, have to be in line with the straight line that's, uh, that was provided here. So you can see, so I've placed my protector accurately now. I send it now. So I will now check theta one. You know, this first line is for theta one, and this second line is for theta two. This is theta three, theta four, theta five, and theta six. So I will check my theta 1 was the value. Let's see. This is 0 here, yeah? 20, 30. So this is 30.4. 
that is 34 rather so you can see this is what 34 so i will record my theta 1 to be 34 i will there now so i'll go for my theta 2 the same thing just the same procedure so i've gotten this one to be so my theta 2 is going to be 40 43 so that's 43 so i go for my theta 3 that is going to be 55 so you can see i think you, you are seeing it so that's 55 so my theta 4 that's uh, 64 so 64 and my theta 5 that's um, 70 71 so 71 you can see the way i'm picking the reading and uh, for the last one theta 6 that's uh that's it's not up to 80 that's uh, 70 78 so i have 78 there so i would there now so i've gotten the value for theta like that so then left for time now so you can see when you are looking at the time you can see t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 and t6 so let's check what the time states when we have t1 so this is 25 this is going to be 26 27 28 29 so that's 29.1 so we have 29.1 29.1 so i go for my theta 2 so my t2 rather so this is 25 so this will be 26 this will be 20 27 so that's 27.15 27 27.15 27 so if i go for the next one this is 25 and you see this is going to be 25.15 25.15 i think you can see clearly so the next one this is 20 so I'm having what, 20, 21, 22, this is 21, 22.1. So 22.2, 22.25, So the next one, which is this, I have 20, 21. So this 21 point, uh, 21 point zero five. So this is 21.05. So the next one, which is T6, this is what? 15 seconds. So this is 16, 17, 18, 19. So this is 19.2. 19 0, 19 so we have able to pick the value for theta and what T. So I will now tabulate my reading now. Look at the way I'm going through the experiments. Please pay maximum attention, please. So I'll draw my table like this so this would be my serial number that is the number of time i carry out the experiment one two three four five and six are we together so i make another column for the value of my theta theta i in degree you put the unit on it then the next one is for my t ti you put slash second that's the unit of time so the next one is going to be my period that's capital t you can put the formula there t all over what 20 so because n is equals to 20 this one is also in second are we together so so the next one is going to be cost of Every other one that I got unit, you can see I put the unit in. So for the first one, theta is 34. So I will have 34. Because I'm the one that picked the reading, so I have to pick the two decimal places like this. Then the next one is 42 degrees Celsius, which is 42.00. The next one is 55, 55.00. The next one is 54, 54.00. The next one, 71.
that. Now, how do we get it? Remember that our N is 20, Abby? So I'll put it in my calculator. Our density is 29.1 divided by 20. Can you see that? So I have to, so my result here is 1.455. Can you see that? Then I go for the second one. You always, whenever you are using calculator to evaluate your values, put your answer in four significant figures. Four significant figures. Okay? So that should be the case. Then the next one, I will have 27.15 divided by 20. And that will give me 1.3575. Okay? So four decimal place, so four significant figure rather. So this one is going to be eight. So this is going to be 1.358. So the next one, 25.15 divided by 20. So I have 1.258 again. So 22.25 divided by 20. So I will have 1.113. Then 21.05 divided by 20. So I have 1.053. So the next one is 19.20 divided by 20. So that will give me 0.96. So zero. Are we together now? So if we have this now, then let, we now look for that, of course. So we now say cos of 34. You make sure your calculator is in degree. Cos of 34. So that will give us 0 0.829. Are we there? So the next one, cos of 43. So that will give us 0 0.731. So the next one, cos of 55. So that will give us 0 0.574. Then the next one. So oops, don't forget. Okay, let's go on first. I want to put this one in four significant figure, but I'll tell you another condition as we got this, as we move. Okay, so cos of 64. So that will give us 0 0.4383. Okay, okay. So let me just leave it in three decimal places like that. Okay, so the next one is cos of uh, 71. So cos of 71 is 0 0.325. 0 0.2, okay, that's 6 rather. Okay, so the next one is cos of 78. So that's 0 0.208, like this. So this table has complete, but it's yet to complete. Make sure your table is neat than this, please. Don't shade. Are you getting it now? When you're taking the exam, you don't shade when you're... Anything like shading should not appear in your table. Are we together? So please, take note of that. So we have our length. You go back to the question. There are some constants that we have in the questions. Like uh, the length of the rope is, is zero point. You have to put it there. The length of the rope is 0 0.50 meter. Are you seeing it now? So another thing that is also a constant there is n, which is the number of oxidation, 20. Are you seeing it now? So all these constants will have to be on your table. So make sure your table is very neat. Are you getting it now? So this is this. We are done with the reading of this experiment. So let's go to the next question there. Then I'll say plot a graph of t square. Okay, something is missing in our table. Wow. We forgot to put the value for t square. Okay, so please. Let's just create a column here for t square. So t square is going to be in second square. That's the unit. Are we together? So, and how can we get that? We get this by saying 1.455 square. So that will give us 2.117. Then the next one, 
five eight square. So that will give us one point eight four four. So the next one, one point two five eight square. That will give us one point five eight three. Then the next one, one point one one three square. That will give us one point two three nine. Then the next one is 1.053. Are we there? So if we square it, we have 1.109. Then the last but not the least, 0 0.960 square. So we have our results to be 0 0.9216. So here makes what a complete table. So there's no penalty in putting it here, if you like, but the most suitable one is t, then followed by t squared, then followed by what? Cos of theta. Or you can also arrange your table at theta, followed by cos of theta, then t, followed by big t. So you can arrange them anyhow, but make sure your column is very, very what? Neat and precise. Is that taking now? So arrange your column in such a way that it will be very convenient for the marker to see. Like this is theta, you can follow it up with cos of theta, or you follow it up with this, there's no qualms. Is that taking now? So this is our reading now. So what's the next thing? They asked us to plot a graph of what? Graph of uh, t square against cos theta. Starting both axes from the origin 0, 0. They determine your slope and blah, blah, blah. So we've talked about that in the a lecture on how to plot graph. On, and I also talk about that if I'll be plotting graph in this video, like I said earlier. Now, another question you need to note here is state two precaution you would Take, if you were to perform this experiment in laboratory, listen to that what question. You would take, it's not as if you take it. So it has to be like uh, a, a, a statement that is going to be a future statement. It's not going to be a present statement. So like, if I want to state my precaution, I was like, I will. If I will do it in the lab, I will avoid parallax error due to what? Due to the reading on the protector. That's one. Two, I will avoid what? I will avoid error due to drafts. That's two. Three, I will ensure a small angle of displacement. That's three. Regarding this particular experiment. And the uh, four, I will ensure a firm word, a firm stand of the retort stand. Are you getting this now? So that is the three precautions. So now that's that about this experiment. So let's look at the next example now. So we are to look at question number two now. And that question number two is from 1999, question number one also. Like I told you, Meknis used to be in question number one. So let us look at the question and see how we're going to pick the reading. So I'll try as much as I can to make this more professional, like I will do if I'm in exam hall. So please pay attention. So now let's go into the question now. Now this is the question now. You see, 1990, November, December, GCE. So let's see. You can see the diagram here. I'm seeing pendulum, okay? I think seeing this pendulum also tell me that I'm dealing with a simple harmonic motion, but in another manner. So, now let's go to the question. This is the diagram above show a simple pendulum suspended from a distance h from the floor. The center of the bulb is at a distance h from the floor. The bulb is set into oscillation and the time t for 20 complete oscillation is taken and recorded so in this case also n is equals to what 20 so the procedure is repeated four more times by varying what h and obtaining the corresponding values for of t figure 1a and figure 1b show the values of hi and ti respectively so figure 1a that is where you are going to pick the reading for H, please pay maximum attention to this. Figure 1A, that's where you're picking what? The value for H. Figure 1B, that is where you're picking value for your time. Okay, let's go with the question. So we asked to repeat the procedure four more times. That shows that the experiment is repeated five times. So determine and record the real value of H. Whenever they tell you this kind of a thing, you have to be careful and go and check under that figure if there is a scale there. You can see there is a scale. One centimeter represents 0.2 millimeter. That is, 
for every one centimeter that I measured here, are you getting it now? Is equivalent to 0 0.2 millimeter. Now watch something so that you know the converting factor you are using. If I have one centimeter that are equivalent to what? 0 0.2 millimeter. If I now have what? Two centimeter, that will become how many centimeter? So let's say I don't know. So if I cross multiply, I will have what? X centimeter to equal 0 0.2 times 0 times 2 centimeter rather. So that's to tell you that for every reading you are picking here, you'll be multiplying them by what? Oh? You'll be multiplying them by 0 0.2. Is that okay? Since they say 1 centimeter represents 0 0.2 millimeter. So for every 1 centimeter you measure, it's equivalent to 0 0.2 millimeter. Is that okay now? So if I measure 2 centimeter, that's equivalent to what, guys? Thank you. That is 0 0.4 millimeter. Is that taken? Okay, so let's come back there. So they, are, they ask us to record the main value of what? H. So let's quickly do that. We know we are looking for the value for H. I'll be determining the value for H. I'll be determining the value for T. I'll be determining the real value of H. Real value of H. Let me put it as H convert, H con. This means I have convert. This is the H I measured, and this is the one I convert, which is the real value. Are we together? So we continue. I measure. So after I measure the, after I convert the value for H, then I will take what? What again did I ask us to look for? Calculate the period Y. So I will have to look for the value for Y. Remember, it's going to be T all over N. Are we together? So evaluate T square. Okay, I think this should be a typing error. So this Y is supposed to be T. It's a typing error, please. It's supposed to be T. Because T square here is supposed to be Y square if this one is actually what? Y. So T square now, but you cannot find such mistake in your exam, sure. Now it means that the whole of the things we are looking for is H, T, and H conversion, and uh, the period and the square of the period. So let's quickly determine that. Remember, I said I will be more professional in what? In getting my readings here. Okay, so let me rule a very professional table. Okay. So we are both in exam all together now, guys. Okay, so let me place this here. So I have this. So the only constant I'm having here is that N is equals to what? 20. So I put my constant on the table. So this would be my serial number. And that will be ranging from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let me just demarcate between them. Like this. So like this. Okay. So the next column is going to be for my... So this column is for my H in centimeter. The next column is going to be my H convert in millimeter. Okay. So the next one is going to be my T, remember, in second. Note very well. This is the H I measured in centimeter. And this is what? This is the H that I convert. You can just write it on the graph that one centimeter is equivalent to 0 0.2 millimeter. Are you getting this now? So these are constants that are supposed to be on your table. So the next one is going to be my what? My T. That is the period. This is period in second. Then the next one is going to be my T square. So T square in second square. Do we get this now? This is our table. Okay, so now let's go to take our reading. Now, whenever you are taking a reading that involves ruler like this, please don't place your ruler like this. You are going to have a parallax error. So all you just need to do is to, you know, here is your zero point. So place your ruler like this. Can you see the way I place it? 
Can you see? Good. So this is how you should place your ruler. So now let's pick the readings now. So for H1, this is 0 0.95. It's not on 1. So if you look at the line very well, it's in between what? 0 0.9 and 1. So that will be 0 0.95. So you record it as 0 0.95. Don't convert yet. So our H2 is going to be, this is 1. So this is 1.85. 1.85 1.85 so the next one is our h3 so our h3 is on this three so one two three four five six seven that's three point seven h3 is on three point seven zero so our h4 this h4 here this is four Okay, this is four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is four point seven, four point seven zero. Then our H five, which is the last one here. So this is uh, five, one, two, three, four, five. So this is eight. This is going to be five point six. 5.60 so we are done with that each now so the next thing to do is to what to convert so it means for every value I have you multiply by 0 0.02 so 0 0.95 times 0 0.2 rather so I have this to be 0 0.190 so I have 1.85 times 0 0.2 so this will give me 0 0.370 then 3.70 times 0 0.2 this will give me so this will give me 0 0.740 so if i have 4.70 times 0 0.2 so that will give me 0 0.940 so 5.60 times 0 0.2 so this will give me 1.120 okay so can we see this now okay so the next thing is to get the value for our t so how do we go about that so this is t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 so our t1 is this is 50 seconds Abi. so 51 52 53 that's 53.5 so we have 53.50 so the next one is going to be this is 50 then this is 51 this is supposed to be 51 but it's not exactly on it so it's going to be 50 point nine zero are you getting this now so fifty point nine zero so the next one is going to be this is uh the t3 this 40 for 20 for 2 for 3 so that's 43.50 so the next one is going to be 40 exactly on 40.00 so this one is 35 so it's in between so this is going to be 35 35 point this is very close to one about just let's say one to that so let's just say this 35.90 as well is that taking on so this is just percentage error so we are still within the what within the actual value so let us get the value for what for our big t now so our big t is going to be uh the small t which is 53 Point 0.5 then divide by the number of oxidation which is 20 so that give us 2.675 so the next one is 50.90 divided by 20 so that will give us 2.545 then the next one is 43.50 divided by 20 so that will be 2.175 then this is 40 divided by 20, so that will give us 2.000. So this one is going to be 35.9 divided by 20, so that will give us 1.795. Okay, so the next one is to take the square of this, 2.675 square. So this will give us 
six. So two point five four five square. So that will give us six point four seven seven. The next one two point one seven five all square. So that will give us four point seven three one. Then two square that's four point zero zero zero. So one point seven nine five all square. So that will give us three point two two two. So we are done with our table like that. So now, so can you see the table now? Okay, okay. So please, I think it's because of the bio I'm using. There shouldn't be a painting here, please. Your work should be very neat. Remember, this is the millimeter one. Is that taken? So we have our table now. What's the next question on neat? So we have to plot a graph of t square on the vertical axis and the real value of h. What's the real value of h? The one we convert. Are we together now? So, what again did I ask us to do? We asked to determine the slope s of the graph and read and record the value of t square, t square naught, when h is equal to zero. So we are looking for the value of t square when h is equal to zero. We can only determine that from our graph. So, taking pi square as 10, Calculate this. All these ones are just direct. Once you get your slope, you just put it here. You get your t square, you just put it here, then you get your value. So, same thing here. Say, state two precaution you would take if you were performing this experiment in the laboratory. The precaution here is similar to the one that we stated earlier because it's still on that simple harmonic motion. So, this is that about the second question. So, let's look at the third question now. Okay, so guys, we are supposed to look at the third question here, but two things involved. If I should make the second, the third question now, the video will be too lengthy and it's going to consume more of my data, so please just pardon me. I'm going to make a, a video for the third one later. I guess in, should, in case you are not getting any of this, so I'll still make video on the third one later. But I promise the next video is going to be on it. Is that taking out? But Absolutely, this is how everything goes. I'm going to be plotting the last one, the last reading. That is the one we just took now, the question about two. So I'll be plotting the graph because the cause of the question they ask us is that what will be the value of t square when h is equal to zero? So that you'll be able to determine what? You'll be able to determine the value of, as in you'll be able to answer something of such, should in case they ask you that, okay, at social value, what will be the social value from your graph? That's the reason why I'm plotting the last one now. So, Let's quickly look into that, guys. Okay, let's see. So, guys, they ask us to plot the graph of uh, t square on the vertical axis and the real value of h on horizontal axis. Okay? Now, let's see. Like I used to tell you that whenever you want to determine what, whenever you want to plot your graph, the one you are plotting on the vertical axis, come to check. What's the highest number there? That is 7. And the lowest is what? Three. So remember, your graph book must cover up to two thirds of your graph paper. I will not say much here, so you can just check the link in the description box below to see how to plot a perfect graph. Okay? Now let's see. Here is my graph now. I'll first of all count one, two, three. I'll count it above, so I'll place my ruler there. So I will now choose my scale now. I'll choose my scale. So, if I choose one centimeter, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see that it's almost cover the graph. So, if you look at it now, you see that it's almost cover the graph. You see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, it's okay. Are you there now? So, that one centimeter, it's okay for this vertical axis. So, it means I can rule my horizontal line here. So I'll just quickly come here and write. Okay, I think you have to pardon me. Let me change my pen. So I have to change my pen. I think that other pen is fluctuating kind of. Okay, so you know, remember you have to plot with what? Pen, so. So in order for you to see it clearly that I'm using pen. So now I've determined, so I'll quickly come here and write that uh, the title of my graph. I've explained all of this before. The title of my graph, so I'm having what graph of uh, t square against against uh, h. Are you there now? So 
the scale of my graph is just what two centimeter because the distance between this box and this box is two centimeter so two centimeter represents one unit on t square axis or you see vertical axis so just check the description box i've explained more about graph there so you can just what you can kick off from there okay so i want to check that of what horizontal so h conf is at the horizontal what is the maximum value there 1.1 and the minimum value there is 0 0.19 okay so the same thing i'll first of all count one two sideways like this i'll place my ruler there then i will check okay if i pick a reading like 0 0.1 would that be sufficient 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 it's not sufficient let me change to 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 1 and 1 1.2 i think 0 0.2 is a good scale right so i have to plot this down like this have we seen it now okay so i'll come here i'll say two centimeter represents 0 0.2 units on each axis okay so i'll quickly label the axis this is h axis in millimeter i'll put it there so my graph is a vector quantity i need to show this arrow showing the direction of the graph so and this is my t square in second square so this is the zero zero origin that the axis to start from so i have to label the graph now this is 0 0.2 and this is going to be 0 0.4 and this is going to be 0 0.6 and this is going to be 0 0.8 and this is going to be 1.0 and this is going to be 1.2 enough so this is going to be 1 and this is 2 and this is going to be 3 this is 4 and this is 5 this is 6 and this is 7 this is uh, 8 are we together guys okay if that should be the case let's start to plot now okay so when the sun is, is zero point before we go i don't want to mention this before because i felt you are going to watch the video on how to plot graph if you are yet to watch there's need for you to determine the value for all this small small scale i said a lot in that video please kindly watch please okay you have 10 digits here right that is 10 of this small small line for you to know the value of each line you have to divide the units on that axis like this vertical axis now this t square axis the units there is what one if you divide one by ten that's 0 0.1 it means these small small lines on the vertical axis they represent 0 0.1 on the horizontal axis you have 10 the units there is what 0 0.2 divided by 10 you have 0 0.02 it means small small line here represents 0 0.02 take notes please okay so for t square 7.1 so we first of all speak that of horizontal. So it's 0 0.19, 0 0.19. So this is 0. Point what? 0. 0.02. This is going to be 0. 0.04, 0. 0.06, 0. 0.08. Are you seeing this now? So this is going to be 0. 0.1. Can you see now? So we have our 0. 0.1 here, 0. 0.12. 0 0.14, 0 0.16, so 0 0.18. So you have your 0 0.09, 0 0.19 rather in between here. So down to 7.1. So this is 7.1 here. So I pick this. Can you see? So we'll go to the next one see uh the, the next one is 0 0.37 so 0 0.3 this is your, this is 0 0.2 so it's going to be 0 0.22 0 0.24 0 0.26 0 0.28 0 0.3 are you seeing it now 0 0.32 0 0.34 0 0.36 0 0.37 is going to be in between the line like this down to 6.5 6.5 so this is 6 1 2 3 4 5 so we have it here like this so i pick my point here like this are we together 
okay? So the next one is, is 0 0.74. So this is 0 0.6. 0 0.62, 0 0.64, 0 0.66, 0 0.68, 0 0.7. But it's 0 0.74, so 0 0.7 to 0 0.74. We have it here, like this. So down to, what will be the value? 4.73. So that's 4.7. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is 4.7 here. So I have this. So can we see? So the next one, which is the fourth one, is going to be 0 0.9, 0 0.94. So this is 0 0.8, 0 0.82, 0 0.84, 0 0.86, 0 0.88, 0 0.9. Are you seeing it now? So 0 0.92, 0 0.94. So I place my ruler there. Down to where? Down to 4. So this is 4 here. Okay, you see, there's nothing difficult in this. You can see we are plotting with fun. There's no cleaner. We are using pen. So that shows perfection. You have to perfect your graph before you go for your exam. Kindly do that. Okay, the next one, we have 1.1. 1 .1. So 1.12. So this is 1. So 1.1 1 .1 will be somewhere here like this. Down to what? 3.222. Just a 3.2. So this is just 1, 2. So we have it here like this. So, the next thing now is for us to what? To pick our line. So, we have to try to pick three. So, if you look at this graph now, you see that it's an inverse graph. Okay? So, it has picked this point. It has picked this point. Okay? Does it really pick this? No, it doesn't. Okay? Does it pick this? Does it pick this? It picks. Okay? Okay, let's do it like this. It picked this and it picked this. Okay, so there's no palms. Just rule your line down. Pam. I can decide to turn back. So, can you see now? So, I can circle like this. So, this one's almost. So, so the next thing now is our slope. So to pick our slope, I can pick my slope anywhere. Remember, this graph is an inverse graph. It's an inverse graph. Oh, wow, I never knew it's going to give me this. I do, I know, don't let me lie, I know. So we have this here now, okay? So remember, your friend might decide that, okay, he wants to extend his own slope downward. There's no qualms, but I want my own to stay here. So. I like to put a VC in my own graph so that it will look, it will look more beautiful. Okay? So here is going to be a change. A change. So this one is going to be a change in H. This is change in H. So I'll pick that of the vertical axis also, like this. Wow, see my graph. Hey, can your graph ever be like this? Yes, with practice. Okay. So I have this. This is not compulsory. It's not compulsory and it's not giving you any mark. And it's not deducting any mark. Just to make your graph look more beautiful. So this is just going to be delta T square. Okay. Now, what will be the slope? So you have to take this down like this. I'll take this down like this, and I'll take this down like this, just like this. So I'm taking this down like this, and uh, here also I'll take it down like this. So this would be my T1. Are you getting it now? I can make it my T1 because it's an inverse graph. So instead of making this on my T2, let me make it my T1. Are you there? So this, okay, let me just, let me say this is T2. Okay, let's go by normal. Whichever one, you still have the same answer. So this is T1, T1, T2. So this is H1 and this is what? H2. So slope, slope S is equals to delta t square all over 
delta H. So this will be T2 minus uh, T1 all over H2 minus H1. So all it just needs to do is to determine the value for what H1, H2, T1, T2. You can easily pick that here. It's as simple as that. So the only thing I, that makes me plot this graph is for you to determine the value of your what? T square. When what? When H is equals to zero. This is the reason why I'm plotting this graph. So now watch. At this point here, H is equals to zero. Will you agree with me? Yes. The value of h here is zero. Now, what will be the value of t square when h is equal to zero? So you now come to look at where this line was. Eat this point last. Can you see? This is the point at which it eats the point last when h is equal to zero. So this is going to be my t naught square. So I just the time. This is eight. 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4. So my t square, t square is 8.4 when h is equal to what? Zero. Do we understand that now? Okay. So that marks the end of the lecture. So you can put it, this one is going to be in second square. So that is, let me, let me write it well the way it's supposed to be. So this is going to be t square naught equal what? 8.4 second square when h is equal to zero. So you can then use that to answer every other question here. So like that of this, you know, you already determine your slope from here, so you just calculate your slope. So you put it here, so you get your full mark. Thanks for watching and subscribe. If you are yet to subscribe, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate you guys. So I really appreciate you guys and uh, I commend your effort in trying to learn more with me at Math Physics Hub. Guys, don't forget to share within your friends and subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys.